Hi, welcome back to the Hicks Homestead. It is a cool, beautiful afternoon in southeast Georgia, and we've got a mostly cloudy sky, but we're making solar. So I had a subscriber ask a question in the comments, and I do my best to try to read your comments and reply. So please keep the, uh, the comments, the likes, and the subscribes coming. I'm trying to grow the channel and live my dream of homesteading. So right here we're going to go to talk about what the subscriber had a question about. So it's how do I hook my Pecron E3600 LFP to your house? Have a qualified electrician install a generator interlocking safety. Uh, that is step one. So my main breaker cannot be on when my generator is on. And right now, it's not a generator. This has got power to it, but I am not running my house on the E3600 LFP right now. We're going to go and take a walk around. You can see the cable going into the house. And right now, this is my backup for the backup. That is a... Uh, 6,250 watt generator, 8,500 watt starting. That's what I used before I got this set up. Now, to run 240 volts, you need the Pecoron 240 volt hub. And your generator cable that was plugged in outside at the inlet is plugged in right here. That goes to, we're going to call this line one, and we're going to call this line two. For this to work properly, you have to have both your line one and your line two plugged in, as well as the data report, which there's another one right on the other side. Um, if you watched my series on DC bonding, bonding this together DC to DC, this power station through the, the 48 volt expansion port is connected directly to this power station. And I got an email from Pecron and they were going to send me one of these cables to modify. And you'd have to cut the data cables. There's, I think there's like five little data cables in here that you'd have to sever. And then this just becomes a dumb cable. I uh, went through the specs on this in the last video, but I'll go through it again. Uh, this is 6 gauge, 105 C rated, so it's good for at least 55 amps. The length of the cable is 5 feet long, and it's probably never going to have that big of an imbalance. Now, this is pretty exciting. I wondered if it would work, and I decided to try it. So, I have solar inputting here when I go into the solar setup you'll see that these are linked together reason for that being um, I want to maximize the solar coming in and not have to run two separate lines into the house and this is right now this is all temporary this is not permanent installed which is why this which you should not do is there but all of this is nice and cool um, we're not even close to getting to the amps on that. We're, we're sitting eh, probably around 20 amps or so at 87 volts. So we're going to go back here. We're taking in 1,700 watts. Battery state of charge is 72%. Um, like I said, it's cloudy. But check this out. We're over here. And... We have power coming in. All of these batteries are getting charged through that DC bonding cable and only using the solar input on this. Now, this is not the permanent setup. The solar panels where we started, I have a whole nother set. So it's going to be identical panels going into this unit as well as this unit. But I was curious. So the other day I hastily did this setup just as a test 
to see if I could charge this and have this charge as well. And in theory, it works, and it turns out in practicality, it works. Why would you want to do something like that? Well, this power station has, I believe, an advantage that I don't know that other power stations have. Uh, I'd really like to get some other power stations to test, so I need your help and support. So if you would subscribe to my channel, help me get to the 1,000 subscribers and beyond, I should be able to start purchasing other power stations for testing at the homestead and find out in a real world situation not only what is the best setup for my situation but what I think the best overall value is because these things are not cheap why would you want to do a setup like this well in the preparedness world two is one one is none and I learned that lesson with this unit right here. This had a failure in the AC board, sent it back to Pecron. It took about six weeks to get it repaired and returned. They also changed out the BMS board in it. That failed in hurricane season. I had no ability to output 120 volts. Had 48 volts, had 12 volts, but no way to output. If that were to fail, I still have a battery pack here and I still have the 12 volts. I still have the solar inputs. So even if the AC board fails, I can input solar into here, which will charge the batteries, which will charge this and charge over here. But I just won't have 240 volt output anymore. So I do have some duplication which is a good thing. Um, for the 240 volt to set up, set up to work, I believe this is probably one of the better values on the market. But it's not without its quirks, which is why I have this bonding cable. I'd really like to get my hands on uh, EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra because it seems to be a little bit more robust and 240 volt is built into the unit. So there's not the need to network your battery cables. But I'm not sure how that setup works if you have two of them. So if you know, leave it in the comments. But this is in response to a question of how do you do your 240 voltage setup for your power stations. And a little extra, I wanted to update you guys on this because I'm really excited that this this is working where I'm charging this with the sun and that is also taking a charge without that. Now this battery was a little bit higher than this one when we started and don't go off the battery percentages unless it's fully charged or fully discharged. I have noticed a difference in battery percentages but when I go in and look at the battery voltages they're pretty much equal the whole time. Right here, we're at 53.6 volts on this battery. And over here, we're at 53.7. So, as equal as they're going to be in, in this setup. So, that, that's really exciting. Um, this is not going to have a charge indication because the charge controller has no idea where the power is coming from. It just knows that it's getting power. And it is charging the batteries. I'm not entirely sure how the BMS is going to manage that, but I would say that the BMS would read the batteries and say, hey, stop charging the batteries or stop the current. Not entirely sure how it works when you're feeding in power from this way, but I've seen other YouTubers, um, instead of using the additional Pecron batteries, they've used like uh, 5.2 kilowatt golf cart batteries that are 48 volts and wired it in a similar fashion as this. That's where I got the idea for the bonding cable. So, quick recap, 240 volt setup, you've got your line one, your line two, your data communications cable, and your hub. Your hub goes to a generator cord, generator cord goes into an inlet installed by a qualified electrician, and then you're able to run both sides of your breaker panel. 
One caveat, when this is in this setup, you cannot charge through the wall outlet. It is locked out. It will give you an error message if you try to plug it in. It will not accept charge when it is hooked up with 240. If you do have to charge from the grid or from a generator, you have to disconnect your outputs and disconnect both sides of this cable completely. And then you can put your two 15 amp plugs into a generator and recharge the unit that way. Just make sure you're within the capacity of your generator. And I don't recommend trying to charge with the 30 amp if you're going to charge both of these at the same time. Because the goal is not to get your generator. Most of these household generators are 30 amps. Um, these are going to pull between the two of them uh, right around 30 amps. So you're going to be asking a lot of your generator to do it. And make sure that they're on different legs of your generator. If you come over here, and of course I've got it facing the opposite way, but sometimes uh, your 20 amp plugs in your generator, um, one goes to one side, the other goes to the other side, so they're out of phase, similar to what 240 is. And that may be trial or error, or the generator may be labeled. So check your generator and know how you can plug this setup in so you're not asking for 30 amps from a 20 amp plug. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this was informative. Sorry that it got a little bit long with my rambling, but thanks for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe.